welcome folks to a voice in the wilderness live radio broadcast once again this is the Lord Jesus hour all about the mask it's all about it my friend enemy if you're an enemy it's alright if you get something out of this maybe you'll get something out of this I hope for your own uh, good to be spared I hope somebody gets spared out of this wicked uh, end time USA. We're going to look for the master. And I apologize about Friday night. I, I just didn't pray. <clears throat> Friday night. My, my, my mind wasn't operating correctly. I hope so tonight. I'm doing a little better. But uh, I don't, I do not take painkillers, so... Uh, Friday night was a, a rough, really rough for me, but I to thank the Lord Jesus, thank the Lord, the King, and we're going to look to Him now in prayer. My goal is some more of this message about the USA in uh, prophetic scripture. Alright, so we're going to look to Him first. Uh, Neil, or bow down, whatever you, whatever you can do, you know. Neil, bow down, lay down. Let's give him honor. Let's stand if you want. Oh God, thank you, Lord, for who you are. That you are who you say you are. That's the main thing. So that anyone that really leans on you, trusts in you, will be okay. You promised this. And I thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for that. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are real. And a real... <laughs> a real help to them that look to you and trust you. Thank you, God, that there is such a thing as faith that we can operate in faith and uh, have an uh, effect on you where it's going to you know, it's gonna move you and... and uh, uh, cause you to work, cause you to work with your power, praise your power. I look to you, Lord God, in faith for the needs and trust you for it in thy great name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for getting us through this wicked earth. In thy great name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please lead me tonight, God. I pray for anyone out there that is seeking your truth. People that love you and people that are seeking to praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. All right. Praise God. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going out. Um, it's been really cold. And I'm up here in the mountains. I'm in the mountains up here, near the border of uh, PA and New York, that's, man, but I, I heard that down the, in the south, they're getting it, rough down there, a lot of blackouts, things like that, cold, people died, and other places of uh, yeah, extreme cold and all kinds of hardship won't live, terrible storms. Well, it's, you know, the swine, the swine and the goats and the dogs. Now, those are God's terms. That's Christ Jesus' terms, right? The, the swine, the goats, the dogs, they're bringing the wrath of God upon this modern USA. That's what's going on. They're bringing the wrath this country. So, God's people are going to be affected to some degree by that. It's always been the case in history. But he will not put his wrath on one of his people, although they will be affected by it. So there'll be a certain amount of trouble for everyone, you know. That's what's happening, my friends. It's, uh... Of God upon an abominable generation and nation. And I want to continue tonight with that the USA enemy prophetic word, God's Bible. I'm going to get back. 
not because it's you know before it was iron. But so Jeremiah 49. Let's take a look. Yeah. 
Obadiah, verse 3 and 4. Let's take a look now. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring thee down to the ground? Nobody's going to bring us down. Nobody's going to take us. So thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Hey, you know, what's the national symbol of the U.S., huh? So thou set thy nest among the stars. I certify you that space program. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Now, this God is the aviation. And then they went into outer space vehicles, these fools. If you listen to me, you have to be an aviation or something like that, or baseball round. I'm not saying this to condemn anybody, but you got to understand you are foolish. I'm not going to play games and tell you something you like. You ever tell you what God is saying? You can see God about it. Find out before you die. Find out. But this is what God gave me in 85. Gave me this one first. Over die three and four. Oh my. And, and in verse, the next verse, five, in, in, in five it's talking about, it, it insinuates here that the same, uh, the same nation that he's talking about here, the same people, uh, they're going to be spoiled. In other words, going to be destroyed and there's not going to be anything left. And that's insinuated in verse 5. And it's shown more clearly in other scriptures like I've already shown you last program. Alright, so that's something to meditate on. Now, over time, pray for as you might have noticed if you're paying attention. Ties right in with Jeremiah 49, 16. The two different men Two different men. And maybe Jeremiah mentioned over the I don't remember if they lived in they might they might have lived in the same time period. I'm not sure. They're two different prophets and God moved on them to say the same thing. Same thing. And let me go back to Jeremiah for now, look at something in Jeremiah in a second. Does this get so heavy? I mean, this. Yeah, the most. No, okay, the most about Edom. And, uh, mind you, this is the end time. These words are concerned the end time Edom, the latter day Edom, which is one of the terms used for the U.S. in a prophetic scripture, or one of the terms. Babylon is another big one. Uh, that's in more places than you don't do that money on Friday night. All right. So we sit now. Let's go to the next of uh, the previous one, Amos. Book of Amos. Chapter 9. Let's take a look. Amos. Chapter 9. Wait a minute. I'm going to do here. Nine chapters. Oh, there it is. Oh, Amos chapter nine, verse two. All right. Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves at the top of Mount El Carmel, I'll come. I will search and take them out, out from there. Then, though 
they be hit from my sight in the bottom of the sea. That's what I command a serpent, he shall bite them. And I don't know exactly what's meant by the serpent here, but um, I, I don't know what uh, animal he's going to use. But you know, a whale, just a whale. I don't know if you, if you call it sharks or serpent or what. But a whale, just a whale, even a shark body. Could, I would say more like a whale could do a lot of damage to a submarine. I believe it makes the cannon. There's a whale that do a lot of damage if you go crazy on a submarine. Anyway, God's got to plan that now. What, what, what is this famous night? The U.S. started these abominations. The U.S.A. These abominable inventions started here. Underground uh, oil and gas diggers and Lord. 
says to God Almighty, Almighty God, Christ Almighty, at least you're liars. Protect your people. God allows and he allows the military with to protect the borders of a nation. That's it. Hmm? Right. That's it. So God's going to stop them. Come off the praise of the earth. The voice of thy messenger shall no more be heard. The voice of thy messenger. That includes the religious messengers, hypocrites. All right. All right. Watch this now. Chapter 3. This gets heavier. What? Chapter 3, verse 4. I was showing you how this filthy, filthy USA, the then time America is so filthy with nakedness and sex, dirty, filthy, abominable. The preacher got silent about that a long time ago. This preacher here cannot be silent about it. Because of the multitude of the holodoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcraft that sell its nation through her whoredom and family through her witchcraft. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. I will discover thy skirts upon thy face. I will show the naked the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. I will cast abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile, set thee as a gazing star.
be proud. His soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yeah. Also, because he transgresses by wine, he's a proud man. He's a keepeth at home. For enlarging his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Shall not be take up a, a parable against him and a tawny power against him, saying, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. How long, and, and to him that laid it himself with thick clay, he steals from everybody's paycheck, just about everybody, all over the nation every day, stealing people's money, increasing on that which is not there, stealing, stealing. All right. I don't know, I think it started around the Second World War, which is very minute compared to what they do now. I remember right here about a year ago and all the reason about it. Shall not thee rise up suddenly that shall fight thee, and awake that shall vex thee? Thou shalt be for booties unto them. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee, because of men's blood and the violence of the land, of the city of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that covenant an evil covetousness to his house. That he may set his nest on high, he may be delivered from the power of evil. This nation will not be delivered. Now look at verse 15. Woe to him that gives his neighbor drink, put it, it, that putteth his bottle in him and maketh him drunk, and that thou mayest look on their nakedness. That's what this is the U.S. These are the fruits of Ham and Moab, the spirits from back then. Same demons, they don't die. Same thing, that's what this is, right? No shame for nakedness. It used to at one time, a hundred years ago, not now. Filthy, filthy, filthy. God hates it, my friend. Oh, yeah. And I haven't I heard something on the news a few weeks ago. There was about three or four young uh, pig men, a pig, that uh, carried a woman from one room in a college, I think it was. They carried her to another room. They got her drunk, I don't remember right. They got her drunk. They carried her to another room and they raped her. The first they got her drunk. Now, this is the spirit of hell that the devil from way back, you know. And it doesn't have to be that extreme. I mean, you know, all this stuff, fornication, adultery, nakedness, God hates the whole thing. And he's going to do something about it. Now, let's look on and let's look on. All right, just fly it by. All right, we've got a backup. Uh, we've got the hammer ready. Okay, uh, uh, Zechariah. 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 So, Zephaniah. Or Zephaniah. Zephaniah, chapter. The 
believers are true and righteous all together. My people, every one of us. There are uh, things, of course, that I don't understand. It. There are things that I don't understand. It. Keep not in things that take place, things you allow. Who am I? Who am I to even begin to figure out your judgments, your decisions for judgment? Lord Jesus, I thank you, God. Just thank you that I'm able to just trust you, able to believe your word, I believe your report in Isaiah 53. Oh God, thank you. Thank you for your report of your sufferings for our sin. And you actually speak down to this wicked place. Speak down low to this planet. To take feeding, the feeding, terrible feeding, feeding we deserve, punishment we deserve. Punishment that was so heavy, nobody could understand it. Because you're an almighty God, and for you to go through that it has to it had to be something that's way, way deep, way more than anybody can understand. I thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. According to everything I see in your word, that's the only way anybody can be spared from hell. But hell is very deep also. Hell is so deep. Hell is so awful and horrible. And that's your decision. You have the right. You created everyone. You have the right to put anyone and whoever you want in that incinerator. God, I fear thee for sure. Please help me to be your will. Lord. Be pleasing to you, O oh God. Above all, Jesus. Praise you. I pray for anyone else that desires this to, to please you, to please you, and to be in your will, God, to be under your protection. Please, Lord God, I look to you for those other ones also, anyone listening that receives this word, that believes these reports. And now, particularly, them that believe this report from us, that's your prophet Isaiah said, chapter 53, the report of you coming to this place to suffer for us, oh God, suffer for our sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Lord. Let's take the bread. When you break a piece of that bread now, just remember he was broke. Broken for you, oh God. I can never get over it. I, I can never fully grasp that God. Please forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for any sins that I've done. For any wrong attitude. I know I've had some wrong attitudes lately. With the pain and everything. But God, I thank you, Lord. You took the, the worst pain imaginable. Oh God, you took it worse than Job, worse than any of the men of the Bible. Paul. They went through a lot of pain. Some people said you, you took the worst, the worst. Thank the Lord. I believe it. I believe the report. Oh, take my sin. Give me life. As well as other people. Life, you gave us life. Lord, let's eat this now together. Remember this suffering. They broke up his body. This bread represents when he got beat up. It also represents eating the word. You need to eat this word. Stay in God's Bible. Study and read and soak it up and spend time with it for your soul so you can see what God wants you to do. Oh, 
Moses read it like a book. Read and see what God wants you to believe. You don't know what to believe, just pray and get in there and he'll show you what. Take the grape juice out. He called, he said, the blood of the vine is the pure blood of the grape, another scripture. Unfermented grape, you know, unfermented juice from the grape. Let's get ready to drink this representative blood that was set on the tree or sin. Also, it represents, the cup represents doing his doing his will, being in his will. He did get the cup. He went through with his part. This song is for the Master, the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus took his cup. We went through the... We were supposed to go through it. He, he, he called us to do our part, my friend. You don't have to get crucified on a cross, thank God. But you do have to be obedient. And be, you know, do what God tells you. Go through whatever you have to. Even tough things for him. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Pennsylvania, nearest city, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, United States of America. <laughs> 